Welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming to this talk. Um, I will be talking about a project that um, we were commissioned to do for Sound and Vision in the Netherlands. Um, they're part of a project called Images for the Future, Bilden für die Zukunft, is it in, I think this in German, um, and that's what it says here. Our project is called Z Oak, also C, and the goal was to build a generic recommendation framework for the cultural heritage field in the Netherlands. My name is Sim Fase, I'm managing partner at Zimmerman Zimmerman in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. A bit about Images for the Future. It's a national project uh, with the aim of preserving audiovisual heritage of the Netherlands through conservation and digitization. It's a seven-year project which started off in 2007 and it will end in 2014. It has a total accumulated budget of 150 million euros and during the project a total of 137 hours of video, 22,000 hours of film, <coughs> excuse me, 140,000 hours of audio and almost 3 million photos will be restored, preserved, digitized and disclosed through a variety of services. So what to do with all this data besides digitization? The current status is that there's now over 10,000 hours of film digitized, which is actual film, 8 millimeter, 8 millimeter 16 millimeters, 35 millimeters, almost 80,000 hours of video, over a million images, and 62,000 hours of audio. And we've been building loads of interfaces, applications, and tools on top of all of this content. If you want to know more information about Images for the Future, you can go to imageforthefuture.com slash en. So back to the project, Z Oak. What is the main, what's the uh, main purpose? is to create meaningful relations between assets and users by means of a recommendation engine. And this was part of the strategy of Images for the Future to build several software frameworks that we could use on top of the content of the Sound and Vision Archive in the Netherlands. We are also tried to build an API which should be fully functional based on REST calls on top of the Mahout Hadoop uh, sorry, Mahout Hadoop setup, and to develop a recommendation framework based on an existing framework. So we were not going to build something new. And on top of that, build an administrator dashboard, like a central hub for controlling the main components of this framework, basically a GUI. And one th the other point was to have all the code developed open source. This is all public money. so. Everything that has been created will be licensed under an open source license. This is the issue many archives have that deal with the long tail. Recent news becomes popular for 24 hours, 20, 48 hours a week, and then they sort of disappear into the archives. And as you can see by the numbers, this archive is quite big, so they needed to come up with some tools, in this case a recommendation platform, to get these long tail items back to the user. <coughs> we started off with a market analysis to see what kind of code base it would, it would be available or suitable for this specific project. And one of the, the, the other issues that we thought was important that this code base is sustainable not just for a couple of months, for, but for years. And we also had a question, can we have any semantic correlation uh, established within the project and the technology that we were about to build or build on top of, be it it's uh, lexicon or ontology based, so we could connect thesauri that are in use by many archives around the world um, to build a trust network based system based on, on FOV, it's a friend of a friend specification, um, or to have a context adaptable system that extracts additional information for the, from the lexicon or the ontology in place. In the end, we identified two frameworks that were suitable for the, for the goal. One of them is the June Recommender System um, framework. It's built by Telematica Institute in the Netherlands. 
it has a version 4.0 RC1. And it's basically a set of software libraries that allows developers to create a prediction engine. One of the issues here was nobody was working on it anymore. It was built on some European project, and the latest release is actually from 17 of February 2009, which is over two years ago now. So we found <laughs> Apache Lucene Mahout, which at that time was named Taste. Uh, it was version 0.2. Uh, it was an Apache Foundation project and it had an Apache license attached to it. And on top of it, we could use uh, Hadoop for uh, clustering. So our choice was made. And, and now we actually had to do some work. This is the core concept um, where we have a classification engine, um, we have a clustering engine, the recommendation engine, obviously. We need to be able to send out ratings, views. We want to find similar content with similar users and generate recommendations. If we look at the technical architecture, um, we have divided it into three different layers. So it's easy for us to connect to Hadoop, to the data storage, and to the MapReduce algorithms. And this is a tile server, which means language server. This is a proprietary piece of technology, but this is something we access as a web service. And it enables us to classify um, words faster. Uh, so we think we can use more different algorithms or lexicons or thesauri to put into this picture. We build a rail stack that actually talks to the blue part. Um, the rail stack does the recommendation, does the management, uh, it collects raw data, it sends out REST information requests, and uh, the blue part in this picture sends back uh, JSON XML uh, recommendation responses. On top of the rail stack, we've built a web interface. This is actually the, the dashboard which is available for content owners, content platforms. They can access the platform, add users, create their own recommenders. Just a brief look at the Rails front-end structure. Um, obviously, we need a collection. We need data to analyze, to train. We need how templates. We need a recommender, the content provider, and a content provider user. Just a bit on the data model we've, we've used. I've spoken about FOF a little bit. Um, we have two sets. One, of the, one, of, one is the rating, where we actually do the rating and that we include into the FOF, which is just an XML specification. And the other one is the user. And if you look at this image, you can see how this works a bit, where we have a user, we have a rating, we have an item, and another folk, another friend of a friend. And this is what the XML serialization looks like. So back to the central dashboard, the hub we've built on top of this uh, system. We wanted to grant access to the content providers. We want to import and train collections of those content providers, create recommenders, create templates for recommenders, if you're, a, uh, if you're a user, you can create a template, which could be an item-based recommender uh, or an a, or a, 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 um, asset-based recommender. It provides statistics, and it provides two things as an output, a simple HTML widget, which you can use very simply for blogs or your content platform, um, and you can set filters to the recommendations. So if you ingest a collection, it's possible for the user to limit the dates. Let's say you only want to use the year 1947, um, or you can use subparts of the collection. So a bit on collection users and rating. We've, uh, we've done this in a twofold way. 
we are using the um, OAI PMH protocol, which is supported by the uh, is an initiative by the Open Archives Initiative. And we use protocol, protocol metadata harvesting. So if you're a content provider and you have an OAI collection somewhere, you can just push it to the platform. And within the platform, you can talk to this, um, to, to this specific jury and say, OK, Every hour, I want to update it every day, every week, or every month. This sort of depends on the archive um, that is in use. So what's good about this one? Collections are updated by the content provider. There's no user information stored in the OIE. However, this is a, spe this is a specific uh, project job. Um, it has a variety of controllers available. We're using a specific um, OAE CZP, which is at the end of the line which is a content search profile being used in, in many uh, um, institutes for education. Um, and it has a problem that's a cold start problem. We have no information on ratings nor users. And the other format we're using is the move lens format, which basically allows you to add a collection file, add a ratings file, or a end user file. So this is the ideal start. You have all the data available. Um, from your collection, your users, and your ratings. Oh, it's too fast. Sorry. <clears throat> one of the minus, uh, one of the disadvantages is that it's very static. Updates derive from the content platform itself and there is no har harvesting mechanism available. So a bit on the recommendations, we, are, we have two ways to render the recommendations, which is simple HTML widget. Um, it basically gives you unstyled HTML, which you can uh, use. It has a top five recommendation and a simple like dislike. Or you can make calls to the um, ZOG REST API. Um, you get full access to the API to build your own custom recommenders. Uh, you can use REST calls to access the framework you can import, analyze, and train data, um, and this is all uh, real-time. So one use case, we're uh, connecting this platform to the Dutch Broadcasting, Broadcasting Organization in the Netherlands. This is an on-demand platform. Um, this is how it could look. You have on the front end, you'll be able to recommend items, rate items, see similar users and connect. And on the back end, you would be able to set linear recommenders, for example. You want to have three different recommenders, one that runs from 4 o'clock till 6 in the evening, from 6 till 8, from 8 till, till, till 12 or whatever, because your children will, will probably look a bit different at this platform than you would in the evening, and your taste will be a bit different later on in the evening than, in, than at 6 o'clock in, um, uh, in the evening. You can set filters, so limit data on content or only show specific categories. So the quality of recommendation, so what, de what defines quality? We've set a, uh, a gold standard, just to, um, but we also very simply define non-quality. So if we have Sesame Street, which is for kids, um, which is, and currently has an editorial process connected to it, we don't want the also see to be anything gruesome. So this is something this is not a good recommendation. So this is still an issue with cold start, and this is still an uh, academic issue in that sense. So for the roadmap, on the short term, uh, we bring it on stream the end of this month. We um, want to release the REST AP to the community, which is still under discussion because we really don't know who we should talk to in the community. So this is something uh, we are still thinking about and, uh, well, obviously connect more content platforms. And in the long term, this will be maintained for a three-year period. We're looking for a hybrid recommender in the sense that we want to have cross-platform capabilities. If you have dozens of TV archives, they can maybe mix their archives together and obviously identify risks in development and upgrades. Um, Mahout has just been released to 05. Um, it's very well possible if Mahout comes to 1.0 that the whole API is completely different. So, well, this is, uh, this, these are the risks with working with the sort of state-of-the-art platforms. And that's it for me today. Thank you.
Thank you for the presentation. Um, are there any questions? We have five more minutes for discussion here in the front. What kind of property do you use to determine the similarity between items so the recommender can um, sort them correctly? What kind of property properties being used? Uh, we use the algorithms for, that are actually included in Mahout itself. And we have added two um, text mining algorithms that we also want to push back to the community, which are specifically language-based. Uh, the company that, 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 that has been building this, they are working only with the Dutch language, so they have their own um, algorithms in place. But, but those were two that were actually ingested into the Mahout, because we see Mahout as like a set of, as a, just, just like a simple set of algorithms. And uh, so we use Mahout only for this. Yep. Um, what I was aiming my question more at is, do you uh, uh, focus on, for example, the descriptive content, uh, the text that's associated, or more on usage patterns uh, uh, um, given to you by, by users actually looking and clicking and voting? Uh, this, this, this sort of depends on the recommender a content provider wants to use. Uh, because you can go into the dashboard and create item to item based only or you could do collaborative filtering so we have a so we have a different set of templates that users can use so i hope this answers your question a bit so the recommendation side of mahood is typically the most stable so far how much trouble have you had with instability so far well, we're now in the phase of acceptance, so it isn't running in a production uh, environment. So this is something we'll notice in summer, I guess. But have you converted from 2 to 0.5? Uh, no, not yet. We're using 0.4 for now. Yeah. How much trouble was there from 0.2 to 0.4? There was no trouble. Okay, good. No. Yeah. You mentioned the metadata uh, interface. Uh, I would like to ask you if there are plans or if, there are, if the metadata is in any way connected to the European platform yet or if, there is, uh, if there are any plans to do so. Uh, yes, it's, it's funny you mentioned European because I wanted to use it in my slides, but I decided not to. Um, uh, what we understand from European that there are um, creating national hubs in the Netherlands, in France. So what, what we do, want to do in the Netherlands, we want to connect to the Europeana national hub. Um, and basically this system is, is, is running as it is now. And it should be able to connect to Europeana or better, uh, Europeana should be able to connect to this platform. I'm not sure what kind of metadata set uh, Europeana is using, but I guess it's some kind of Dublin Core standard. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, I, I haven't worked on Europeana itself. It's Dublin, Dublin Core plus X. But uh, a quick related question, um, what licensing model are you using for the metadata? Because that's very important in the context of Europeana. Sorry, I, I didn't the, get the full question. The licensing model for the metadata? I Lic mean, licensing? Right. I mean, how can the data you provide via that API be used by others legally? Well, OK, this is a legal question. But this is an IPR question more in that sense. Uh, you mean that if, if, Euro, if Europeana connects to this framework, then there is some legal issue? No, I mean that metadata by itself is yeah. also um, protected by copyright, or yeah. at least in some countries it is to some extent. And this yeah. has been a huge problem and impediment for reuse of metadata. And it's a very major issue with Europeana itself. So it is something that needs to be considered alongside the technical issues of interfacing. Well, yes, obviously, but this is something up to the content providers themselves. Uh, I, can, I, I, I know there are many German broadcasters, or at least this was the way a few years ago, that, that they were not allowed to even move their uh, meter data sets without German IP ranges. So it, we always had a strange situation with, with IPR in that sense. But um, I, I think in Europeana, at least, there is a minimal set of data for the description of the assets in there that, that uh, is not really bound by any legal issues. But then again, I'm not part of the project, of that project. Okay, thanks. Okay. Any more questions? No then, oh, here in the front. 
I'd like to know uh, if there are any uh, providers that have uh, deeper metadata than DC or OAI DC. If there are, uh, yes. Well, in, in, in the Netherlands, a lot of the providers, they use uh, DC sets. Um, and, we are, we're, and a lot of the museums in Holland are actually using the OAI. So that makes it very easy. As, as i just shown, we're using the OAI uh, CZP connector, but it's, it's not that difficult to change the connector or to, to create some kind of mapping. But what we would like to avoid is to create dozens of different of mappings. So we try to achieve, like move to one standard because it makes life easier for everybody. So you're basically not mapping? Um, from, uh, say, uh, Lido or Museum Dot or formats like this, but simply um, ask your providers to deliver the data in the way you need it? Yeah, we, at, at, at current we are uh, offering two ways of, in, of, of a form of ingest, which is the URI using OAI or the movie lens uh, format where you can upload your collection, your ratings and your users. Yeah, that's pretty much what Europeana currently does. Uh, they are, but okay. they, are, they are just about to change the format to a much deeper format, mm -hmm. which is already has been released, but it's not implemented yet. So it's not on the platform yet. But they're going to uh, do this soon. So I think there are no more questions. Then thanks again for the talk. Thank you.